Listen, some videos are just more fun than others. This video has put like a cheesy giddy smile on my face all freaking week. It has been so much fun. We are doing designer parody fashion. I'm gonna show you how to take an iconic, super famous logo, flip it on its head by customizing it with whatever word or name or phrase you wanna feature, and I'm gonna show you how. So let's do it. Hey you guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Orly and this is the DIY Designer. Now for those of you that know me, you know that usually I do like designer dupes where I take some like fancy schmancy gown and I show you how to recreate it for a fraction of the cost and kind of customize it and tweak it to yourself. Well, this is like sort of like that, only not. We are doing designer parody fashion. Now you guys have probably seen these. There's been some really famous ones over the years, like the Celine shirt that said selfie, the Balmain shirt that said ballin, and they're just really fun. Like they're really playful. Any word, any phrase, your name, whatever the heck you want, I'm gonna show you how to do it. How to source the font that looks like the original logo so that you can actually recreate the word yourself. I'm also gonna show you how to remove certain elements but maintain other elements of the the logo. We're going to do sublimation, fabric transfers, iron on vinyl transfers with the Cricut, which you got that great precision, all sorts of different techniques. I will have the different techniques time coded below. Let's get started with one of my favorite. We are going to hack this Dior Addict shirt and do a little DIY addict. Let's do it. All right. Well, let's start off with how to find the right font. So what I have here is defont.com. It's a totally free website. And I clicked serif because I know this Dior font on the right is a serif font. What I'd recommend doing though is going up to the top and actually typing in the original logo into the preview. That way you're more readily able to spot it when you see it. And keeping the original image on the right while you're scrolling is super helpful. So keep a picture open and just look for a font. I found this one and it looked pretty darn good. So I installed it into my computer. All you're gonna do is click the download option, install it, and this is a personal use font, which means I can use it for my personal use, but I can't sell it. If you're gonna sell it, you do need to buy it. Now I'm opening this up into Cricut Design Space because this is such an easy one to just cut out of iron on vinyl. It'll be a precision cut, absolutely perfect. So I write DIY addict. I adjust the size to the size I wanted on my t-shirt. I change the font and I change the line spacing to mimic the original inspo shirt. Now this is gonna be cut out of red vinyl and I had something else I wanted to cut out of red vinyl. So I'm gonna design it at the same time. This shirt, I don't know why is $1,800, but I actually wanted to make a fanny pack, a Supreme logo looking fanny pack. I love this uh, program. It's called Photoscape. It's a free download. I'm dragging and dropping the original Supreme logo into it. And now similarly, I'm gonna write the text and I'm gonna look for something that looks similar. Avenir was a pretty good text and one thing I like about Photoscape is there's this option here that's called transform. When you click it, it sort of releases the lock on the font and you can stretch and adjust it. I stretched it and I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. So now I write the word I actually want to write, which is empath. Another thing I like about this is there is a paint option. So I go up to paint and I start painting out the word. Now you can see the red wasn't exactly right. It has this eyedropper. So I eyedrop, pick up the exact red and basically just erase the old word. Now I'm able to drop my word directly into it. It's a rectangle that's the exact right size, the exact right shape. And all I have to do now is upload it directly into the Cricut design space. I upload it and I click out all the letters because that's what I want to be cut out. And I add it in to the existing project I'm working on because again, these are both gonna be in red. Up here in the top hand right is where you can guarantee that both of them end up in the same color. So you just kind of drag them saying, hey, these are the same color and they will go together. Make sure, make sure that you mirror it. You guys, iron on transfer needs to be mirrored on Cricut, super important. Then you go through the normal process. You pick whichever iron on you're using. I'm gonna use the Sport Flex because this is gonna be really tight and I want it to kind of stretch over the bust just like that original Dior Addict one you can see there. So once it cuts, you're gonna peel away the vinyl on the backside. Peel everything that you don't need away and then you can use your weeding tool to take out all the smaller elements. Remember, I also did my little Supreme logo at the same time, so I'm just gonna prep that and get it ready. I'm gonna do the t-shirt first and then the fanny pack next. You wanna prep your shirt by just pressing it and giving it a little bit of warmth. This will get rid of any moisture and then you wanna do a lint roller to get rid of any lint so it's a really good fuse and it will stay on, machine washable, last forever. All you gotta do is make sure it's centered basically. This particular logo is sort of high up on the chest just underneath the neckline. So I sort of measured where I wanted it, made sure it was even, and then you're gonna follow the directions based off your fabric and your transfer. Mine was set to 375 for about 30 seconds, and you can see that stretch is perfect. 
Now, let's move on to the empath or supreme logo. I want the word to be white on the inside. So I'm just cutting a tiny little rectangle of white vinyl that I'll do first. This will be like my base. So I'm centering it. I use a little piece of tape to hold it so that it stays centered while I press part of it. Once part of it's ironed, I remove the tape and I can really get in there and make sure to iron the whole thing. Peel off the protective layer, and now we've got our backing. So this is a great way if you want to do double layers of vinyl, you can just like sort of layer them right on top of each other to get pops of color that shine through if you want to do something just like that. And there you go. You can see I've got my perfect empath logo from far away. It totally reads as supreme. This particular one, though, I liked the crossbody strap on it. So I created a font that looked almost like that. I'm interrupting real quick to remind you that next week is the release of the curb appeal makeover we did on the front of the house. We increased the value of our house so much by just doing a little zhuzh on the front of the house. I'm going to take you through it step by step to give you guys some really great ideas of what you can do in your own home. That's really not only going to make it look amazing for you just living there, but if you're thinking of selling, this is going to like, boom, increase the value of your house with very, very little work and very little money. So it'll be out next week. Okay. I'll leave now. Okay. So you can see, basically I just made the words exact to fit the strap. And this is something you could do if you just wanted to make like a statement crossbody strap that looked like a designer version. All you're going to do is the exact same process, heat it, weed it, you know, the deal. It's really easy and looks amazing. Okay, this is maybe one of my favorite, you guys. This Burberry bucket hat I am obsessed with. I love the way that it's got a brush font. I love the way that it follows the curve of the hat. In order to do this, you wanna take a photo of what you're working with, anything that has a curve. So I just took a photo of my hat laying flat. I popped it into Canva, which is free, and I removed the background. Now I basically just have an image of my hat that I can use as a guide. So again, I'm throwing this guy in the Cricut design space, and you just want to adjust the shape of the hat so that it is the exact size as your real hat. Because again, we're going to create a graphic that's going to follow the shape of the hat. For this one, I decided to do DIY designer, my logo, and I'm sizing it. You can see that there's a curve option. So all I have to do is adjust the curve until it follows the natural slope and shape of my hat. This is something you could do on the collar of a t-shirt or on another, like a baseball hat, really on anything that you have, take a photo of it, upload it, and then just form your font around it. Now, after I printed it, I realized I actually wanted the words to be much, much, much tighter together. So I ended up cutting each letter individually and lining them up, but it still works fine because the curve on the bottom of each letter still fit my hat perfectly. All you're going to do is iron it from both sides, peel it. I can't wait for you to see this one completely done. Okay, let's move on to printing directly onto iron-on transfer sheets. Now, I wanted to do a thrasher tee, but I had the idea of doing one that said thrifter. So I sent this graphic to someone on Fiverr. It's a really great app. You can get graphics done for super inexpensive. So I found someone who was able to do it within my budget. We went back and forth on the graphic until I had something I liked, and then she sent me the graphic. I made some tweaks to it, but ultimately it worked really well. What I did is I went to Kinko's. I just went to Kinko's and I brought the dark iron-on transfer sheets with me, put them in the machine and printed it directly from Kinko's. It was perfect. Then I just grab a regular pair of scissors and I cut it out. Now, for those of you watching that do have a Cricut, this is the print and cut option would work great. I don't have a printer at home, so that's why I didn't do it, but you could print it and cut it all at the same time. But for everyone else, print it at Kinko's and then just cut it yourself at home. I cut out the majority with scissors and then all the super little details in the flames and inside the letters with an X-Acto knife. Once your graphic is fully ready to go, you need to peel the backing off of the iron-on transfer. Obviously, I made my life really hard by doing it with this very ornate graphic, but it was worth it because it looks super cool. So all you're going to do, again, you're going to cut them all out, peel the backing on, lay them on, and now I'm just comparing it to the graphic that's all in one piece to make sure that I've got them evenly spaced, that the slope is right, and it's good to go. Now, take the transfer sheet that, it, uh, excuse me, the parchment paper that it comes with, gently lay it down so you don't move it, gently Gently put your iron on it and press it without rotating or moving. You want everything to stay exactly where it is. Press it for about 60 to 90 seconds and then you're ready to go. I actually liked pushing my fingers into it when it was warm because it almost started getting the texture of the t-shirt underneath it, which looked much more legit. But look, it's pretty good. I haven't washed it yet, so I can't attest to that, but we're pretty good. 
Now here's another example of when you wanna find a font. If you just literally Google like the name of the brand with font, there's a lot of different people that will recommend fonts that work. This is what happened with the champion font and it's perfect. Now I just write the rest of the word that I need, which is creator in the font that I downloaded. And there we go. Now, when you import something that has two colors, you wanna import it twice, once with just the black and once with just the red. Same thing with this. I wanted to do a Prada logo. So I found a font that was similar by Googling it. And I found a version of the logo that I liked. Now, again, because this is a white background, I click the paint option in Photoscape. I white paint out the parts of the word I don't want. This is gonna say proud maker since 1984. So what I'm doing is putting in the font that I found and adding a little bit of an outline to make it the thickness that matches the original P and the R. Now this is another really fun hack that you can do. I added in a line and made it white. Now I'm taking those lines and I'm basically using it to almost erase with perfect precision the rounded edge so it looks more transparent triangular like the rest of the Prada font. Now for both of these, I just used my Cricut cause I had it open, but you could totally do sublimation for both of these. It would be amazing. It would be super simple. And I'm going to show you guys that in just a minute. All right, now it's time for sublimation. So I saw this amazing J'adore Dior shirt and I wanted to do one that said J'adore DIY. So for this, I actually reached out to Ashley, my friend who has an incredible Etsy shop called Falco clan to print me a sublimation of my graphic. She has a sublimation printer, which I don't. So I sent her the graphic and then she sent it to me. Now, all all I have to do is line it up and iron it on. Now, when you do sublimation graphics, it's only gonna print an eight and a half by 11. So if you want your graphic larger like I did, we actually made everything larger and just sort of stacked it on the paper. And now I'm cutting it apart and realigning it. This just allowed me to make it big. A couple of important things when you're doing sublimation. Number one is the shirt needs to have a decent amount of polyester in it. So this is a 50-50 blend. Number two, your iron needs to get up to like 400 degrees. And number three, you need some pressure to mimic a heat press. When I picked it up, it moved a little bit and I was like, oh shoot. So what I did is I cut off the part that hadn't taken and I like very, very specifically lined it up as gently as I could and tried to rematch it. I was freaking out. I was like holding it. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. What if it's off? It was perfect. It totally realigned and it looked amazing. Sublimation, you guys, is so freaking cool. It seemed so hard and it's so easy and it's like soft and woven into the fibers. Incredible and I'm obsessed. All right, you guys, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this one, man. There are so many amazing techniques and ways that you can do it. I will link everything I use down below. So everything from the Cricut materials to the iron-on transfers, uh, including Ashley's info if you wanna send her a graphic and have her send you a sublimation file. And reminder about next week, the curb appeal makeover, increase the value of your house with a little zhuzh on the front. You have no idea the transformation that it can make. I love you, thank you for being here. I'm gonna go model all of these amazing pieces. I'll see you guys.